All right, hello everyone and welcome to another live video in my Facebook group, The Portrait Photographer's Resource. So today, these are our June image critiques. And yes, that was not, I was not a typo that I did not misspoke. Uh, it is our June image critiques because last month, uh, my crappy internet decided to give out on me. So we rescheduled to today. To, and today, I am joined by an absolutely amazing guest. I want you all to give a, a warm welcome to Charles Wynn. Charles, say hi to everyone. Hey, guys. How's it going? Awesome. Awesome. So we do have some people joining in live, which is great. If you guys are watching, please make sure you drop a comment and say hi. Um, for those of you who are new, if this is your first time submitting, and there are a lot of new people submitting, um, so thank you so much for joining. Um, this is something we do every month where I feature a new uh, speaker, educator, photographer in the industry. And um, this month, obviously, is Charles. Now, Charles, you may all know as the owner of Cheetah Stand, but he's also a very accomplished uh, photographer himself. But I'm going to let you, Charles, kind of give yourself a little intro, let everyone know who you are and what you're all about, and then we'll jump into this thing, huh? Okay, great. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank yeah. you for having me on here. Um, so, yep, like he said, uh, my name is Charles Nguyen. I've been a, a professional photographer since 2008. Uh, I specialize in weddings, mostly Southeast Asian and uh, destination weddings. Um, I've shot over 400 weddings in my time. And uh, just recently in the last year, I've taken over Cheetah Stand, which is a company that's been around since 2007. And that I've also been an avid user since about 2010, 2011. And uh, yeah, it's been a great journey. Um, I really love what I do, and I think that really pushes what creates uh, great imagery and a great business. And things like these critiques and uh, classes really help the industry uh, learn what it's all about. So I'm really glad that you have me on here. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Charles, for joining for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, on a more personal note, you know, I've been using Cheetah Stand here for quite for quite some time, a, a few years. And I absolutely love just the, the design of the stands, you know, um, like many of us, I am an off camera flash shooter and there are a lot of situations, especially at receptions where I need to constantly move my lights and the ability to be able to pick up and, or pick up and set down a light stand with one hand is honestly a game changer. So if you guys are not familiar with cheetah stands, um, I highly recommend that you guys go check them out, pick one up for yourself. Um, if you use my promo code Lara, that's L A R A on the cheetah stand website, you will actually get 10% off on, um, mm -hmm. on your order. So make sure you guys take advantage of that. I personally recommend you use either the C 10 or the C 12, the taller, the better. Um, but you know, your, your application may differ. So, um, for those again, who are new, we're going to go through your images. We have 20 tonight. We are going to go through them, give you some, uh, some feedback and maybe what we like, maybe what we think you could improve. And at the very end of the, um, the video, we are going to be giving away a cheetah stand C10 to one lucky person that submitted an image. And then we also have a pretty big surprise as well for everyone <laughs> that uh submitted a photo this month so make sure you tune around for that so you can see what's going on there charles yes sir. You ready dude yes sir let's get this all right we're gonna go ahead and jump straight into this let me just uh cycle through this here we go so this first image comes from photographer radon burton um so do you want to start or do you want me to start here uh, I can start on this. Okay, go for it. First off, love the image of love maternity. I'm horrible at maternities, but <laughs> this image, great lighting. Um, the one couple of things that I would maybe improve if you're looking for true critiques on it is maybe kind of lightening up the bottom left corner. Um, I think uh, the dramatic feel of it, I get, but um, just maybe just just uh, slightly lighter on there. And then another thing that I personally like to do is I like a little more connection between the mother and the baby as far as maybe slightly tilt her head towards the baby. 
Um, I'm, I love the closed eyes. It's very intimate, uh, gives it a nice timely, timeless feeling. And um, no great image. And just another very small note is probably cleaning up just this little eye, uh, a shadowing of her hair on her left eye. And uh, yeah. other than that, I mean, a very beautiful image. Yeah, absolutely. The processing on this is great. The skin tones are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, I really like that, you know, Radon definitely took the extra time to uh, clean up the skin a little bit, especially on the baby, because, you know, a lot of newborns kind of have, um, they'll have some a rough blotchy. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate the fact she did that. Two things, uh, the only two things I have to notice, or I guess technically three, uh, two, three things. Um, you mentioned the shadow kind of under her left eye, and I'm going to echo that and tell uh radon to watch that shadow under her nose uh and then all to the on the left side of her face um and then right below her nose as well we kind of have some awkward shadows there um that's something that can be fixed in post-production but i just know from experience that if this was t entered in a, a like a wppi print competition for example the judges would definitely um knock that down so that's mm -hmm. something to keep in mind the only other things are kind of the bottom left of the dress. There's like a, it looks like almost like there was an issue with separating the dress from the background. It looks like maybe she cut the, cut the dress out or something. It's very subtle, but if you're kind of looking, if you look at my screen, everyone, you can see my mouse. Um, I'm kind of circling the area in question here. Um, and then also down here a little bit as well. So just something to clean up. And then there's a little, uh, actually, is that on my monitor or is that, oh, it's on my monitor. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, there's like, a, there's like, there's a spot right there. Wait, nope. That's my monitor. Um, no, but I do see what you mean. Yeah. It looks like yeah. it's slightly cleaned up right there. It's just like discolored maybe or something like uh, you, you need to clean up like three more pixels and then you probably yeah. couldn't see the, the clipping on it, on it right there. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I would say maybe if you if she moved her light slightly closer back towards her to kill the angle so much okay. and slap a grid on there if there's not a grid so she could still get the nice side lighting so like the fall off will still be there but then like it'll clean up some of the shadowing like on the nose from the light being a little too far away from the photographer I guess. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Radon, as always, thank you so much for submitting. Beautiful. I really, yeah, I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Let's go ahead and move on. So this next photo comes from another regular submitter, uh, Josh Adams. And this was captured, just some background on the image. Uh, this was captured with the new Nikon Z8 using the Nikon 3518, um, used with a 600 watt strobe, a, a 42 inch mag box, and oh, on the cheetah stand rolling boom arm as well. Um, and then used two 200 watt strobes with mag gels for the rim light. So my, I'll start here. My, my main thing is I love the, I love the subject matter. I love the creativity, you know, especially the, the girl on the bottom, her expression. My, my only uh, concern with this image is it's just, it's really busy um, and I, I can appreciate that, you know, he took the time to light this because if, if he just shot natural light, it would have been even busier. You know, he's able to mm -hmm. underexpose the ambient a little bit to kind of cut down some of those distractions. But honestly, I think it's still a little too much. Um, you see all the banners in the background, you see the trophies, the lights, um, it, it's just a lot. And I know when you're in a gym like this, there's not, there's only so many things you can do. Um, I probably would have just tried to think outside the box a little bit and maybe, um, you know, maybe done that. And then just one final note too is, uh, you know, you can see the flash in the background, uh, in the mirror. <laughs> so just another thing to Photoshop out. But, uh, Charles, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, great shot. Like you said, I love the creativity of it. I also, uh, I would clean up the lights just slightly, even maybe the lights on the left and right side, how you could see it kind of glow still. I would maybe just kind of crop it a little tighter so you don't see it or just uh, Photoshop that out. Um, I would maybe the girl on the bottom, 
mm-hmm. have her less looking directly up at her and have her face kind of uh, more parallel portrait style with the photo and her eyes just looking up at her. So you're not catching like up her nose and up her oh, mouth okay. kind of like that, you know? Yeah. Um, I like the framing that he really did with it because uh, he does get the the gymnastics uh, banner in there. That's really cool. The American flag, really cool. Uh, I would maybe try to avoid getting those lines of light of the light on top in her in the shot. It's kind of distracting with her hand. Right. And uh, maybe I think. I would also try to do a slow shutter or a high speed sync to totally freeze her or create even more motion blur with her motion. Uh, I think that would add a little more pizzazz to the photo and going back to kind of like avoiding the lights on top. One thing, like, I think if you angled a little lower, you can do leading lines with the reflection of those lights into her. You know, if you kind of angle slightly lower and up, then that might actually create kind of a cool little thing. But a cool image. I really like it. Really creative. Um, Yeah. Right on. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Really appreciate it. Hope you're also Mm -hmm. enjoying that new sexy Nikon Z8. I'm a little jealous, even though I do have a Z9, Mm -hmm. but I'm still jealous. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Okay. So moving on, this next photo comes from Critter and a little bit of background uh, on this photo that he provided, he titled this, I put a spell on you. He shot this with just the modeling light on his flash. The wall had the hummingbirds on it and he positioned the model to cast a shadow around them. Uh, he was going for the universal monster lighting from the old movies like Frankenstein and Dracula with the lighting lower and aimed up. Um, and actually I think that that's, that's a great, I think in that regard, he absolutely nailed the shot, you know, um, mm-hmm. that light, that lighting definitely, especially, you know, the lighting and then what she's just wearing and her whole vibe, definitely very old school, you know, 1930s kind of, uh, um, cine- cine- cinematography here. Um, right. The image is a little, uh, out of focus. It's a little blurry. I, I don't know if that was intentional. Um, I also don't know if I actually necessarily hate that though, because you're kind of going for like, you're kind of going for that. Yeah. You're going for that older, Mm -hmm. that older vibe, the older feel. And I feel like a lot of images were actually shot that way. So Mm -hmm. it it actually, normally something like that would like kind of grind my gears and bug me like, Oh, like it's such a good photo, but it's out of focus. And I almost think like, even if it wasn't intentional, it works for this image. Um, what are you what are your thoughts charles no you are ex- you nailed it that's exactly what i thought because i mean there's lenses that are soft lenses like they are made to be soft you know uh, more the dreamy lenses and so um it depends on if it was intentional if it was done but with the vibe of the photo i get it but the, when i first right when i opened it that's the first thing i thought i was like it's out of focus. He, he focused on the back, like maybe shorter. Right. And, um, but this is one thing that kills, or I joke around with a lot of, uh, photographer friends or even a lot of my clients is that a lot of times when you see photos in black and white, they're normally trying to hide a blemish. Like a lot of people right. turn it black and white because it's either out of focus. They couldn't fix the color or something along those lines. And it makes it a little more artsy and feels, but like, with the subject in this, it totally, I get it, you know? So, um, with that, all those intents, I, yeah, everything I would have maybe even angled it. The only, if I'm going to critique it, critique it, angle it a little more to where like the wand shadow doesn't look like it's coming out of her head and maybe oh, play yeah. a little more with the shadow play of it to create some kind of interaction with the shadow, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only um, really issue I have with this photo is the shadow cover on her left arm. You know, it's a little, mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to tell, like, 
it's hard to Where see any is, definition. Yeah. yeah, hard to tell. The transition between the highlights and the shadows is a little awkward. Um, so I maybe would have had the if you were gonna unless you were gonna uh reposition the light, probably would have had the model move her that hand a little bit forward. Um, right. But yeah, just nit- nitpicking on what is otherwise a, an excellent photo. So. Oh um, yeah, bravo. Yeah. So Critter, thank you so much, dude. Appreciate it, Chris. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to this next photo. Um, this next photo comes from Sandra Miltenberger. And actually she is our guest critiquer next month. So Charles, d- don't hold back here. I-, I want you to critique the crap out of this thing. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to see you in Chicago and that's uh, true. she might, she might get me out there, but I'm going to definitely let her know, you know, uh, because that's what you. makes us all, that's what makes us all better is, you know, being an open community, sharing our thoughts on it and taking it for what it is. So, right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, man, this is, this is, it's hard to, yeah, it's hard to critique something like this when it's, it's good. Yeah, very beautifully shot. Um, I'll start off. Um, yeah. First off, yeah, beautiful, great image, something that I would definitely use in my portfolio. Um, a couple of things that I personally would do is maybe move her where she is in this photo. I would probably put her in between the two windows on the left mm-hmm. to give her more of a thirds fill and walking into the scene type type of thing out of – it kind of makes her connect more to the pathway entrance of the grass. So it kind of gives, it'll open all of that up um, slightly. And this is just always with me with wide angular shots is kind of like watching your level of plane. Um, when I just stare at it and I stare at it for a while, the tops kind of give me the warpy feeling because okay. it's slightly tilted down up because which is every everyone does it but whenever you do it with a wide angle you feel it more like uh just the bends of everything but she did a very good job in not making it really like you know it's not a high angle but you could kind of feel it like just yeah. barely um, and then maybe add a little more definition in the clouds on the left side to give it a little more interesting because I like it that it's light on the right side and it goes into dark, but then like it gets light again. So like it would be cool to transition from light to dark all the way or uh, okay. keep it kind of lighter or make it, you know what I mean? Like it just feels like a little loss that it gets dark in the middle and then light again. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So a couple of things uh, I want to say that I like about this image. I love the tones. I love this cool mm-hmm. tone. I love the processing. Um, it, it's perfect. Um, the, it, there's a couple small things that are bothering me a little bit. Um, this is one of those photos I would really like to see printed because if you look towards the if you look in the clouds, especially on the left side of the frame where the um, the shadows meet the highlights, you see a little bit of like kind of M- muddiness. Muddiness, yeah. And I'm wondering yeah. if that's maybe just the how she exported it, or if it's the my monitor or what it is. But I feel like this this image in particular would really need to be critiqued on uh, on print. Uh, just to really see what it looks like. The other Mm -hmm. thing I'm struggling with a little bit, and maybe this is just me and you kind of mentioned this a little bit, but I'm I'm just going to echo it. Um, I I don't know how I feel about the composition and the placement of, of this bride because she's not quite in the center. Right. But, but Mm -hmm. then she's not enough to the left or the right either to where you really get that strong like rule of thirds it, it's just kind of in a weird it, it's in a she's in a weird spot in the frame and i think right. i'd be okay with it a little bit more if she was facing the other way so she's looking towards uh the side of the screen or the side of the frame i should say where there's more space Mm-hmm. But this is this is just a very subjective thing, but it is something that for me is is making me struggle a little bit with the image. But honestly, but just those two things are really the only uh, critiques I have, the negative critiques I have. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Beautiful. Yeah. So. Maybe uh, I think there's like a little gardening issue with the lawn in the bottom left corner. You see it right by the hedge. Yeah. I'd probably just kind of clean that up. Okay. Yep. And just a, just a, just a little things like if if it, yeah. if you're sending it to print or competition, then those are the things that you like just clean up real fast. So yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It's, for sure, those are permanent. Yep. Yeah. And then Sandra, uh, one thing I wanted to add is Sandra did uh, light this using a GT two hundred with a Magmod Magsphere, and of course using a cheetah stand. No, oh, beautiful. Oh, it's even better now. I mean, it is the best photo ever. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sandra. This was awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, wait a minute. Was I looking at the right one? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Um, the next. So basically, whenever someone submits an image, um, I have a little note there or a little spot where they can say, do you want to share how you created the image? And both this image and the next one said the exact same thing. And it kind of is blowing my mind a little bit. And I'm almost wondering if it's a mistake, but I don't think it is. Uh, this next one is from Carrie Arno. And she also shot this with the GT200 with the MagSphere mounted on a cheetah stand. Um, oh, yeah. So big I, fans. I guess big fans. Just a bit. Just, we got the Aus, the Dream Team combo, the Geek Kodo, mm -hmm. the MagMod, and the, the cheetah stand. So um, Beautiful. Yeah, I I personally I'll start here. I I'm I'm really digging this because it's something that I would totally shoot. Um, mm -hmm. This is this is me. This is my style right here. Um, you know, extreme rule of thirds, negative space on the top. Uh, you know, lit with a single light. Um, the posing's phenomenal. Um, a couple things though that are are that if I was submitting this to a client, they probably wouldn't notice, but. Definitely with print competition, this is this is something, Carrie, that if you ever do submit this to the WPPI, you will need to fix because I can promise you that you're that you would not score simply because of this reason, and that is if you look at her legs, her left leg and her right leg are basically two completely different tones. They're one's kind of in a shadow; it's a lot darker. The other one is a little lighter. Um, and just for that alone, this would not do well in a, in a WPPI setting, for example. Um, but from a creative creative standpoint, the pose, the composition, like you freaking nailed this. I absolutely love this image. Um, but that would be my biggest critique and things that you should change would be, would be that. Um, and that is something that you could probably fix in post-production a little bit, but it's going to be more... Um, I think getting it off the camera, straight off the camera, just something to work on. Um, what do you think, Charles? Do you agree with me? Yeah. Or do you disagree? Oh, oh no, no, yeah, I definitely agree. That was the first thing I kind of noticed was the left leg, how uh, the contrast was on it. Um, I would probably either pull her left leg slightly out to, or and bring her, kind of make it the, her legs a little more level with each other to help with the lighting or even do more of a composite shot of, uh, you know, a second or adding a second light or doing a composite where you're upping your settings to make it lighter and helping you with something like that. Um, I do love this image. I love nature stuff. I like when they're working. I mean, uh, my photography is actually called Charlie in the tree. So I mean, there like, <laughs> I love this. And one thing I would probably do is maybe I'm a frame freak as far as composition. I yeah. hate things in the middle unless there's a bunch of leading lines making me want to get you right in the middle of shots. Exactly. Um, so I would probably etch her or like make the cut where kind of into the trunk. So you don't even makes the tree even more mysterious on how thick this tree can be. Okay. And then it makes her a little more over to the right side and gives you the negative space of the left side of branches going out, you know? So um, let me stop you there. Um, and you can tell, you can disagree with me. I, in mm -hmm. this particular situation, I would not do that. And the only reason is because she would be looking out of the frame so if, if you there. had her looking to the other way and then you did that, yes, I agree with you 110%. Um, 
Um, and I could on a hundred percent on, yeah, I can definitely understand your point there, but if just, right. Like, and I told, totally, no, I totally agree with you on that. I didn't even really, sorry. I didn't even think about the subject of what their, their action was. I was actually just kind of looking yeah. at the frame of where the subject I would, my eye would appease you, but yeah, I would actually now turn her head towards the light and yes, then, uh, do all that. What I said. So yes, thank you for exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I do like that perspective though, because it does add a little bit of mystery, you know, um, mm -hmm. Oh, how big is this tree actually? You know, but right. We, but yeah, no it, mm -hmm. other, you know, we're again, we're nitpicking on such an amazing image. It's like, you know, you could do this, you could do that at the end of the day, art is subjective, you know? Right. And I know this is a very hard thing to do when you're in the middle of a foresty looking area like this. Yeah. But one thing that I always try to avoid is the whole trees out of head thing. And I'm not sure if there's any kind of crazy angle or maybe even burning the tree behind her. So it's not like you don't see it highlighted like on the back right of her head. Right. Uh, you could still see the branch and it kind of blends in with her hair. So maybe you burn that down to where it's not uh, highlighted then uh, yeah. it would make her stand out a little more. Okay. Yeah. I could see that as well. Yeah. Maybe just bring it down a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you, Carrie. Beautiful. Appreciate you. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's move on. This next photo was shot from Kelly, uh, was shot by Kelly Buchanan. And, uh, she captured this with her Canon R6, uh, an 8200 and a mag sphere with a 16 millimeter lens. Um, first off Canon gang, What's up? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so I, I, I'll, do you want to take, I see a couple things off the bat, but I want to see if you wanted to start here. Uh, sure. So first I think, uh, it depends on what the picture is done for. If this was a senior photo, did you say it was a senior photo or just, I didn't, but any, yeah. I'm going to assume it is because it looks like he's imposing from kind of, high school. Right. So, if so, say this is a senior photo, I would maybe take a little better angle to where you can see the name of the school because you can see the name of the school right there. Right. But uh, I would like it to where you can see the whole high school. So like the whole display of it. And even if you turn it at the angle where you can see it, I think it makes it a better angle for the horse itself. You know, like it would make a good leading whole side. I think, uh, yeah, just fixing the angle of this photo would really help things because there's a lot of kind of useless space to the left bottom um, that, so say if you turn the camera 30 degrees more to the, or clockwise, I think it would make for a very interesting uh, angle of everything going on in at, with the subject, so. Okay. Um, yeah, those are the first things that come off whenever I first saw this photo. So, absolutely. Yeah, I um, I would completely agree there. A little bit of the composition, just one step to the left to really see Alamoda Heights High School mm -hmm. in there. That would be fantastic. Uh, I do like that she incorporated the horse into the shot as well. Mm -hmm. Um, my big issue, and uh, I don't know if you noticed this or not. Well, there's a couple things, but the big one is you can see the shadows of the photographer and the light stand person oh, yeah. on the bottom of the frame. Right. Yep. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, something, you know, maybe a normal person wouldn't notice, but, you know, on an image critique, we're definitely going to nitpick you. And we, we, I saw that. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. So I... I also would bring down the highlights on the door. That's really bright. So, you know, one thing I've learned from, you know, submitting photos over the years to competitions is your eye will generally tend to gravitate or tend to focus on the brightest part of the scene. And in this case, it's the door and it is a little distracting. So you could easily burn that though uh, in post-production, just bring down those highlights a little bit. And I think you're going to have a much, uh, a much stronger image. You'd actually probably be really surprised how much stronger the image would be by just making that one simple adjustment. And of course, getting rid of those, uh, those, those shadows of the light stand person. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So th that's mm -hmm. all I have to say on that. 
uh, thank you, Kelly, for submitting. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so next photo comes from another regular, John Hawking, and he was hired to photograph a kid's rodeo. Um, and at the end of the rodeo, he photographed the kids with the horses. Uh, he shot this with a strobe, camera right, and a reflector. Yeah. Beautiful. I just did a horse and girl shoot uh, yesterday in 107 degrees. So yeah, that I sounds feel, like a lot of I fun. I feel this photo. I really feel this photo. So uh, you go ahead and start this one. Yeah, no kidding. Um, you know, the... I'm, I'm going to kind of point out the obvious here, or maybe it's not obvious. I don't know, but to me it is, uh, the light is a little flat and I would like to see the, the light a little bit more, uh, off axis from the camera. And the, the most apparent way that I can, I can see this, or I can tell by this is by looking at the catch lights in the girl's eyes. You know, you have that flash, that flash head right in her pupil. Um, and that's a little, a uh, little distracting, Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say just, you know, maybe getting that strobe a little bit more off camera would really benefit you. And I know when you're working with like animals and horses and stuff, it can be challenging to do mm -hmm. that. So that would be something I would, um, play around with a little bit. And I know in certain situations, you know, when, especially when you're dealing with an animal, you know, they're not always going to cooperate. So you might not always have the most, the, you know, all the time in the world to set up a shot like this. Um, but other than that, I would probably actually, uh, narrow my aperture a little bit more to actually see a little bit more of the horse in focus as well, since it's such a prominent right. part of the photograph. So, you know, I don't know what he shot this at. I'm based off of the bokeh in the background. I'm going to guess maybe he shot this at like two eight or three two i would maybe try to bump this up to like five six even and if as if, as long as you're using that 70 to 200 or that long lens you're still going to get the compression in the background so it's still going to be slightly out of focus you're just going to get more of the horse in focus as well um what do you think there Charles? right no i, I I totally agree with uh, everything that you said, because one thing that I do notice is kind of like the front of the horse's nose isn't, uh, isn't in focus. It's more front. It's got the front focus or uh, front. What am I trying to say? Uh, yeah. The, the front back, back focusing. Front oh, focus right. Camera. Right. Foreground. It's more of a foreground than like in focus. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, if you increase it to probably like a 5.6, something like that, then uh, you probably get all of that in there, or maybe take a step back. And then um, maybe probably get the whole, oh my God, I learned the name, reined, the whole rain in the photo because it does match her outfit. It's part of, it's an accessory. So I'd probably like to get the whole part in there. Okay. Uh, but this makes for, this makes for a great uh, portrait. I do like that the, you got the horse looking at the camera basically and she's posed with it uh like I, uh, I was telling you before we started the broadcast it took me i don't know probably like five or six minutes just to get one yeah. photo <laughs> of like them posing the way i wanted them to pose having the horse do what i wanted to do and like actually they didn't allow me to use any flash or even the reflector with the horse because they were afraid the horse might kind of freak out so kudos that he was able to uh get this lit up uh and looking nice like this i really do like the image and uh, i think that's about all I, I have to say about it um, i really yeah. like it maybe do it as a uh landscape instead of a portrait get more of the get the whole horse booty in there and everything you know? okay okay yeah mm -hmm. um well either way uh, you know this was shot for a client client's gonna absolutely love it so oh yeah exactly yeah. Yeah, so good job, John. Really appreciate you submitting, as always. Um, okay, moving on. This next photo comes from photographer Locke Lee. Let's see here. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I'd be, curi I'd be curious if he's using – he didn't share any details on how he captured this, but I'd, um, I'd be curious to, to – 
to figure out how he was able to light the front of her or the back of her so well. You know, you see, usually when you're shooting against such a strong highlight like this, it's very easy for the image to get washed out, which it, in, in some areas it is. Like if you look at the top of her head, um, you know, it is definitely blown out. You lose a lot of detail on the top of her head uh, and then towards her veil as well. But uh, I'm going to guess maybe just the light. Since the concrete's so light, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of the light is bouncing coming in from the door, bouncing off the concrete, bouncing off her dress and coming back up on her. Um, and actually the more I look at it, the more I've, I'm kind of confirming that because you can see the transition of the light on her back. If you look at her lower back, you could see how it's gradually, um, turning into shadow as it gets, moves up her shoulder, um, which mm -hmm. indicates that the light is bouncing from the floor back up at her. Right. Um, but yeah, the, the pose is nice. Um, I think some of the highlights where it's just clipping a little bit is a little distracting. That would really be my only main critique, though. So okay. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Charles, if you're seeing something I'm not. Yeah, sure. No, I, uh, I noticed the same things as you did, especially with the lighting. I was actually kind of leaning on the lines of he was using a just a regular reflector and having it bounce because it looks pretty strong for it just to be a natural off of the yeah. uh, concrete. Like it looks like it's kind of pointed at her like arm, like right at her elbow. Like that's kind of like looks like the high highlight spot of it and then the fall off of the rest. Um, one thing that I would be careful or like, I don't know, this is the great debate that I always have with my buddies is like, what do you center in this photo? Do you center her yeah. head or do you center her body? You know, and I'm on the lines of, I like the body uh, kind of centered. And when you're using like a background like this, I actually kind of like it like very as symmetric as possible, I guess is the best way of doing it because yeah. it's the whole lines of symmetry that makes this image even more interesting that it, than it is, you know, and uh, maybe even clean up some of the lighting, how it falls off more on the left side than the right side. And that's also what leads me to think that maybe there's a oh, reflector okay. being used over there, how it's lit up more on the that. right door. Yeah. And um, so uh, I would maybe make it just uniformly lit on the, or symmetrically lit on the, on the doors to kind of add this whole lines of symmetry thing. And then yeah. something just doesn't feel very level on the ground. Like as I'm staring at this image back, um, it just kind of feels like it's yeah. slightly slanted or something. I don't know. Very, like very the doors simply. are straight. Yeah, yeah, the doors are straight and everything. But then you're like looking on the bottom. It just feels like something's off on the plane, right? Well, in all honesty, um, I don't I don't even uh, – the concrete might not even be level because if you look at the – amount of highlights mm. between the the bottom of the door and the and the uh the concrete it's there's a larger mm -hmm. gap on the right side than there is on the left side um so that just might be a thing with the with with the ground but um, oh yeah he's saying that he lit it up natural lit. he's uh he's commenting in the, and and okay. Uh, okay gotcha gotcha so he just cleaned it up and did a little uh, burn and stuff so yeah i'll maybe burn that the uh right door lock just slightly down to kind of match the left door to give it a little more even fill i do like the sh like how it gets dark and like lit up so i would probably burn the right door versus uh lightening up the left door okay oh. gotcha cool mm -hmm. well lock thank you as always uh always love seeing your images so appreciate yes you. beautiful mm -hmm. yeah all right we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next photo this next one comes from Another regular submitter, Scott Tibbles, and he shot this with a 24-inch softbox, uh, a 300-watt strobe, and his assistant was positioned below and to the left and eventually wiped off of the face in, of the earth in Photoshop after compositing uh, the, the image. Um, yeah. So let's see here. Um, let's see. So I, I know how I would change the photo if I shot this, but what I would do is not necessarily the right way to do things or the only way to do things. Um, kind of my, my one, well, first of all, uh, Scott, 
I can see exactly where you photoshopped out the light stand because there is a very obvious line right here. Um, can you see that, Charles? Um, mm -hmm. Very obvious line. So that would be something I would spend an extra few seconds on fixing in post-production. Um, and then also the, the light, I think, I think maybe the light was a little too close to them because you're, you're getting a lot of fall off where, you know, their, their bodies aren't lit at all. And then the tops of their heads are just a little overexposed and you're losing a little bit of detail. Um, so those are two things I, I probably would have changed. Um, and now I'm looking at the image more. I can also see where it, I can definitely see that where the two images came together. If you look on the very left of the frame, you can actually see a very faint line, especially where my mouse is pointing. For those of you who are watching, um, you can see a line where part of the leaves are uh, in focus and then part of the leaves are out of focus. So mm -hmm. Scott, just a little bit more kind of the technical stuff uh, needs to be cleaned up on this image. The, 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 the pose is good. The framing's great. Um, the 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 fact that you put this little water wheel right there in the frame is is phenomenal um composition everything is good just some of the technical things that are kind of hurting the image a little bit that need to be um improved on um and then i would have also personally shot this image if i had it available like a one eight lens or a one four something with just super creamy bokeh I think would really do wonders for this image because there are so many leaves and there are so many distracting, uh, you know, gr gr so much distracting greenery here, but that's what I would personally change if I were you. Um, I just talked a lot. So Charles, anything you want to say? No, no, that was great. Uh, no, I agree with you. I did notice those things. Um, the one thing about Photoshop right now, uh, I'm assuming this, he worked on this image before the last couple updates with, uh, Photoshop with the new generative AI, pretty sweet, yeah. does a really good job, but it still struggles whenever you're dealing with so much uh, going on with the shrubbery and the different textures and the different focus. It still does struggle with that and uh, pixel peepers will see it. And uh, especially if you stare long enough, but uh, a couple of things I would personally change uh, besides what you said, I do love the incorporation of the wheel I like uh, everything on this image. I would maybe turn them. What is it? Uh, count, wait, yeah, counterclockwise, just ever so slightly, because you could tell that like they're not totally evenly uh, parallel with with him. They're okay. slightly like a little more towards like where you can see a little more of his face and a little more on the back end of her. So that's not very flattering for her. So you just you get like the whole angle of it. Um, and then I would also have him probably had fixed her dress a little more. So it's not kind of twisted. Be, me being a wedding photographer, that yeah. one thing I always look at is the bride is the main, is kind of the main thing that you have to make sure that they're always, they're the perfect one. And the groom yeah. is the, is the bonus if you get him perfect, you know? Um, and to the note of you were talking about how you could tell where the Photoshop line is on the left. I think if he would have cropped it right there, that was made for an interesting crop because it would have put them a little more in the thirds line because yeah. they're not centered, but they're not really in the thirds. Yeah. You know? Just cropping it right there. Would mm -hmm. If they, if they crop it right there, then I think it will put them right there and then it will have made that little bush to their left of them kind of mysteriously in the corner and you know I like kind of like filling in the corners uh with stuff like that and uh, maybe clean out the the dock poles like how they're kind of like up next to his butt I would actually just photoshop all of that out to where they're just standing on the dock without without okay. the pillars right there but yeah, other than that yeah cool, cool image if I was a wedding couple I'd probably be very happy with this uh something I would definitely print and have uh, good memories of so good job man uh also maybe like with the lighting you could tell like part of the flowers is lit up and part of it isn't like maybe yeah. clean that up just slightly you know? well and again that's just i like i said earlier i think just, just the little light, things the light being in the wrong spot um right so that would fix the rest of the issues we talked about earlier too just 
um, kind of those highlights on the top of them. So, mm-hmm. okay, Scott, thank you. And Scott will be actually, you'll be seeing a little bit of Scott as well, Charles, uh, at ClickCon because he's going to be my oh, assistant. Nice. He's going to be my assistant for oh. my classes. Um, okay, so, awesome. So Scott, when you, when you help me, please pay attention so you don't keep submitting shitty photos like this, okay? <laughs> Just kidding. I'm Beautiful. Just kidding. <laughs> awesome, right. Scott. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week, brother. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, is it already next week? Crap. I get, or, well, oh, actually, I guess, yeah, a week and a half almost. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Shoot. All right. Well, mm-hmm. cool deal. Um, This next photo comes from Ellie B. Chico. Ellie, B. Ellie is a fellow MagMod ambassador, actually. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, she submits a lot with Cheetah saying I love her work. Oh, cool. Beautiful. Oh, ooh, very beautiful. She she has a, a a way of really like highlighting and incorporating these big flowy dresses in her photos. It's something, you know, she she obviously really likes to do. Um mm-hmm. and I feel like I feel like I actually know where this is. Um I know it's in Southern California. I know that for a fact, not only because I grew up there, but because but because she's from there. But I feel like I've I've been here, um, and I can't remember where it is. Um, but yeah, Ellie, if you're watching, I'd lo- I'd love for you to weigh in. Um, I I'm I'm struggling. The one thing I'm struggling with again on this image, kind of like some of the others, is the composition. Um, it's it, it's kind of it's just kind of bizarre to me. My my eye is kind of going all over the place. And her face is smack dab in the middle of the image. Um, I almost feel like this would be a stronger photo if Ellie had taken like three steps to her left and then positioned this model almost like a little bit or at least framed her a little bit more. So um, she's her face is towards the right of the frame and then she's kind of looking out. So you, on the right of the frame right now, you have, um, you know, not necessarily negative space, but you don't have the dress there. And then the left is completely encompassed with her, her dress. So I would have almost, um, like had the more negative space on the left side of the frame and had her head all the way to the right. Um, if that makes sense. So you could even crop mm-hmm. this too where you, you could even crop it that way as well. Right. But mm-hmm. I do like these trees and the uniqueness of these trees in the shot. So I would try to incorporate those in a different way. And that's why I mentioned, you know, taking maybe a step, like three steps to your left. So you could still incorporate those trees in the, in the background. Um, but she's just frame positioned a little bit better in the frame. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with everything you said with all of that. I actually, so the points I do like about, what's going on with it is that I like that the trees in the background do actually a good frame with like her itself. And then you got this really cool, uh, mysterious light, the glare coming in on the left side that, you know, it helps lead it right into her. So you definitely look into her, but I do agree with you on, it just kind of, it's, it's, it makes me feel awkward. Like I'm trying to figure out, exactly what it is and what i think is making me feel a little awkward about it is just her pose of her hand going to the right of the screen with her looking to the left and it's making me feel like i don't know like where am i supposed to kind of look type thing i know you have to do that to get this flowing dress like i'm i totally understand the process of this but I think it may be doing kind of what you said, looking off, then that would maybe even help it a little bit. And uh, just as I stare at it, it does like she looks perfectly straight, but the background isn't like okay. you can tell the li- the line of the horizon is definitely uh, about like five degrees crooked. But that's also probably just getting her straight because she's in motion. So she's probably like a little more tilted in in reality, um, but yeah, I mean, beautiful image. I would maybe like, I think with what you said about the cropping, that would probably also help with just all the kind yeah. of negative dirt space on the right side too. Right. Um, 
like nothing interesting over there like we can bypass all that stuff so yeah but a uh, lovely image the thing about these type of images i love them i love how you light them but i always try to find a story with every photo like i'm trying like whenever you do a exotic headpiece like this a big beautiful dress like i really believe like your background everything really matters like it just like tell me the story like i can look at it and it should tell me like what she's experiencing or whatever so like it, i can't really vibe get the vibe of the story of this one i guess yeah and i think um again art is subjective but if i were to shoot this mm -hmm. you know her her headpiece is so intricate and there's so much detail to it that I would almost like to bring a little bit more attention to it. And one way I would do mm -hmm. that is to shoot this actually maybe with like a, a longer lens so you can get more separation between Compre her and the background. Right. Yeah, you mm -hmm. get that work, you get that compression, you get that bokeh, and you're bringing more attention to the headdress and you're a little bit less distracted by all the, the trees and everything. And you'll still get the unique, you know, the unique curvature of those branches and the trunks and everything. It just won't be as distracting. So I think the um, biggest problem with that, though, is because with this style, because I do a lot of uh, the dresses with the weddings and stuff like that, like a flowing dress is you're normally using a wide, a pretty wide angle lens. I'm assuming this is probably shot on like a 20 millimeter or wider. Uh, she just yeah. does a very good job normally of keeping their perspective good. One sure. thing that a lot of people do is like their way they do the whole planes thing too much to where it makes them look like a giant, like way too leg long type thing. And uh, she does a good job of keeping her uh, plane level. So it keeps all that uh, less distractive. So very good images. I do. I do love the lighting and everything in it though. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Ellie. Thank you so much for submitting. Thanks Ellie. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah. This next photo comes from Steve Eaton and uh, he used a mag sphere on a light stand uh, and he, Asked the wedding planner to help him uh, hold the light. <laughs> you could have had a cheetah stand instead of the person. Instead of the person, they were probably a little cheaper. But definitely loving this image. Uh, did you want to start off? No. Why don't you, Why don't you start off? You had some good okay. points last time we talked about this photo. So why don't you start? Okay. First off, love the image of the, like uh, kind of tying back to what I said before, the whole story of it all. And of course, it's a lot easier telling a story in a wedding because, you know, it's my wedding, this is church, everything like that. Um, I love it. So in that aspect, I really love it. I do love the composition of this image. Um, everything is cool. Now, the first thing that I would personally take away is this light post that you have in the right side um it's makes for an interesting foreground but i think it actually distracts from the photo then it versus it then it uh, adds interest into the photo and also i believe he used that to uh straighten the photo because it's such predominantly in the photo so you use that to straighten it creating the rest of the photo like the church actually looks tilted now you know yeah. and um so i don't know if that's maybe a plain thing it might be actually kind of like he has a camera slightly tilted that caused that or but more than likely i'm thinking like is the whole got you straighten the pole because it's right there and then like it makes the rest of the image slightly uh tilted and then i would make i would have the light a slightly less uh direct on them i would like to create a little more uh shadowing probably move the light from the back left side to the right side like kind of more behind the groom to create more dynamic lighting on the bride because like i said the bride's kind of the star of the show yeah i would i would recommend for sure that you light it just is a general rule you general you should try to light from the groom side um it's it's a generally a little bit more um acceptable if you're lighting from you know if you're uh broad lighting the groom uh, you know if he has shadows because you know the, the bride wants to look brides want to look as flattering as possible flattering as possible grooms generally 
want to look as masculine as possible and it's more acceptable for a, a man's face to be in shadow and to have shadows as opposed to a bride's uh well i should say in certain areas for example you know um you know generally women want to be short lit where you have um you know the light on the shortest part of their face and the broadest part of their face in shadow um which is why you know you, you want to light from the groom side um so one other thing, though, I'm gonna I'm gonna point out. Um, I do agree with all of you, Charles. Um, the light, the the light in the front, yeah, I, it's a little, it's kind of, I I like it, but I don't know if I would put it where he, the Steve placed it or positioned it, and I honestly don't have a solution. Um, I, I don't necessarily have a solution. Sorry, uh, David was telling me my mic's a little low, so I'm just gonna move closer. Um, I don't necessarily have a solution, but I I do think it adds to the photo. Um, but it does make the church look a little lopsided, but the big issue I have with this, and I'm actually going to zoom in for those of you who are watching live. Um, I'm going to zoom in here and let me know if you see it. So there is a dude right here in the doorway. <laughs> And he's looking awkwardly at them. <laughs> so, uh, just something to keep in mind, you know, when you're editing these photos, especially for competition, uh, little tiny details like that make all the difference. All right. <laughs> um, so, Steve, oh, you are watching this. Steve was uh, captured this on a C8. So. Um, oh, nice. Using the cheetah stand. Yep. Um, well, very cool. So, yeah, Steve, just edit that dude out. Edit that dude out. <laughs> um, I kind of, I kind of like the vibe, you know. It's just like the creepy guy <laughs> sitting there. It would be great if it's actually kind of like an X or something like that. It adds right. extra dynamic to the photo. Oh man, <laughs> Steve says, "Holy cow!" Never even saw the dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, very nice image. I love the tones. Love the, the your use of off camera flash. Just a couple small things to to make it better. So. Mm -hmm. um okay Beautiful. moving on thank you, yeah steve. moving on yeah thanks steve uh our next photo um this one comes from bridget q huss and there was according to her um there was absolutely no natural light in the room where the bride was getting ready um I had my second shooter hold a mag box camera right so that it would catch her face as she looked in his direction. Uh, in post, I darkened the light spill on the wall and brought up the blues and yellows to play the colors off of one another. Um, so this is a perfect example of what I was just talking about in the last image. This is an example of short lighting. So you're basically having the, the, the woman, the bride in this case, uh, turn the shortest part of her face towards the light. So the broad side of the, her face, so the, the side of her face we're seeing the most of, um, is in shadow. And in turn, that's a very flattering lighting technique that, you know, makes, uh, you women or your subject look a little bit more, um, a little thinner, so to speak. Um, cause that's generally what women want is they want to look as thin as possible. Um, so with that said, my only critique here was there's a little, there's a few distracting elements kind of on the very, very right side of the frame. Looks like there's like a, a teal Tiffany's box that could either be cloned out or you could simply just crop the image a little bit. But one, one thing I'm really digging about this is I love the bride's natural expression. It she seems genuinely happy and um, sometimes it can be hard to do that. Maybe uh, kind of going back on some things that could be improved on. Uh, I am seeing quite a bit of specularity on her face. Uh, you know, for those of you who don't know what specularity it is, it basically means just like, bright highlights so especially above her um right eyeball uh you know mm -hmm. bring those bring those tones down a little bit same with on her chin you know you get a little bit of that kind mm -hmm. of shiny uh that shiny light um and then finally the last part as well uh actually sorry i'm seeing another thing so two more things i would do um 
you're seeing a little bit too much of the whites in her eyes. And that's something you want to try to avoid when you are posing, um, when you're posing people. I've, I've personally have made this mistake many times because it's one of those things that's actually kind of hard to see when you're behind the camera and you really don't notice it until after you've snapped the photo. Um, so as you're shooting and you're having your couples or your clients or your subjects look off of the frame or look out of the frame or away from the camera, you need to make sure that they're not looking too far. Otherwise you'll see too many, too much of the white. And then finally, um, you know, she mentioned that she did, um, underexpose or at least darken the light spill on the background. Um, I can see a couple areas, uh, where she missed it. And if you look specifically in between her hair, the gaps of her hair. Oh, and then my camera died for some reason. So, <laughs> I'm not sure why I'll, I'll fix that in a second here, but, um, yeah, so that would just be something I would, uh, watch out for Bridget. Um, just those, those few things, but as I'm getting my camera fixed here, uh, Charles, what do you, uh, do you have anything to add? Yeah. a uh, beautiful image. I love that you were able to capture this in the hecticness that I'm sure that was going on because I'm sure this room was nice, tight, uh, way over occupancy with two main creators and they're trying to do their thing. So uh, yeah, kudos on capturing this. Uh, it looks very natural. She looks actually like truly happy that you are like, hey, smile, smile. Okay, like, okay, look happy, look happy. Like she looks actually generally happy. So the, the emotions is definitely there. I do agree with you. Like kind of first thing I noticed is like uh, the, the little Tiffany's box or whatever on the right side, which yeah. also made me kind of feel like may, uh, I don't know how hectic this room was, but I see kind of a pattern up by the light. And if you maybe even use a wide angle on this and put her like in the bottom left corner and then kind of get a cool little image, I think that could make a second cool image, especially if there's bridesmaids over there doing something that makes her like light up like this. Um, I think that would be kind of cool. Um, back to the whole, uh, to the crop and uh, the composition stuff. I think if she, if you took the pillow out from behind her, moved her closer to the edge of the chair, now she could straighten her elbow or her forearm a little more on the chair to where her whole hand can be in the front of the chair. So it'll be more, uh, lit up more naturally lit so it's not kind yeah. of shattered off right there and then okay whenever you move her over a little bit like that now you're in the whole quadrant of the uh of the thirds and then the chair actually creates a whole nother line leading line that you're going to be looking into and i think that would actually create or like lead your eyes to a lot of things of happiness into this photo i i yeah, but I mean, really cool photo. Maybe go a little higher so you're not so low catching her like under her chin mm -hmm. type thing. Good thing there's no like double chin action, nothing crazy like that. But this right. is a lot of girls complain about this angle because of that. They're like, oh, I don't like my neck, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And so I try, I would try to maybe like get up just slightly and get a little more parallel with her. And uh, I do agree with you on her eyes. I would maybe draw her eyes slightly back over so it's not all white and you see a little more of the pupils. Uh, maybe even pull her head slightly back towards the camera, very slightly, not much, but yeah. So, yeah, like, so the nose and the left eye aren't connected like that. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, cool. But beautiful. Um, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, looks like we had some very good feedback for you, Bridget, uh, on this photo. Um, just some small things, you know, to keep in mind next time you do something like this. But overall, like we, like I said earlier, I absolutely love the bride's expression. Uh, mm -hmm. Really, really flattering. Um, it looks very natural. Um, so kudos to you, and, and kudos to you for working in such a challenge, a challenging lighting situation as well. Um, uh, it, I know, I know from experience, you know, it's, there's nothing worse than working in a completely crappy lighting situation, especially during prep. Mm -hmm. Um, so really good job there. Um, we're going to mm -hmm. move on, uh, this, thank you so much for submitting. Hope thank you. See, Beautiful. Yeah. Hope to see you submit some other photos for our next image critique. Um, this next photo comes from Jordan Toves. Um, let's see here. Just making sure we're on the right image. Yep. We sure are. 
okay well, this is kind of cool it's a little different mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. it's kind of like a photography portrait um All right yeah so uh right off the bat a few technical things that i'm gonna address um first of all the i think this is an image that could have been the color grading and the color processing could have been a little bit different on this. It just seems overall, the colors seem very flat. It seems just like a raw image. Um, Mm -hmm. So I would like to see, you know, maybe a little bit more contrast here, a little bit more saturation Just very small adjustments that are going to make this image pop a little bit more. Um, The other thing is the focus is slightly off. So it looks like where the focus is, is right on our bottom button. Um, and mm-hmm. you know, you can, I, I'm assuming the photographer wanted to get her eyes in focus. Um, actually very, uh, very similar color eyes to me actually kind of creepy. Um, but, um, really, uh, yeah, you can see how they're just very soft and out of focus. So, um, that is something to keep in mind if you're using a mirrorless camera, most mirrorless cameras nowadays will allow you to focus directly on the eyes. Um, and then also I can see just a hint uh, more around, especially around the Sony logo and around her fingernails, just slight, some slight purple uh, tinge, some, some fringe in there, um, some chromatic aberration as, as the technical term is. Um, and that's something that's easily fixable with one click in Lightroom. But um, those, for, again, the, from the technical aspect, those are some of the issues that I'm seeing. Um I'm going to let you kind of jump in though and see, uh, see if there's anything you'd like to add, Charles. Sure. Um, so the first thing that actually popped off on me as a stylist, love it, love the colors of like of her eyes matching her shirt, which beautiful contrast with her hair. Um, I do agree with you on the colors, uh, the color scaling. I would probably do a little something a little more interesting with it. Uh, but the first thing that kind of captures my eye is the whole horizon line. It's right into her eyes. It kind of works. It kind of doesn't because at least it actually kind of leads into her eyes, which are very interesting. But then it also helps point out what you said, uh, the focus line, the focus spot isn't right on her eye. And uh, so it does create that issue for me. And now it's kind of slightly straightened it up because like I've said on so many of the, these images, I'm a, uh, I'm a guy of the horizon. I definitely try to keep that stuff in mind whenever I look at stuff, because the thing about images is you want to make an image that people will stare at for a long time that like, you know, they sit there and appreciate. And when they sit there and appreciate it, they start noticing things like that. Like whenever those are the things that like, when you sit there, you stare and then whenever you notice it, you can't stop noticing it. (laughs) <laughs> so uh just keep that in mind a lot of the times guys like unless it, unless the subject they, unless it makes her feel so tilted that it, to straighten up the horizon line then yeah. maybe straighten that up and then see how she looks with that you know versus like okay i'm trying to get her face exactly straight you know right. and then so that becomes a whole thing of like okay yeah make sure that you get all of that right in camera and so you don't have to worry about it. But if you also just kind of went a little higher or a little lower, that probably wouldn't distract me. But since it's, since the line is right, kind of leading into her eyes, I, I, I notice it. And um, other than that, I, this could be just a whole little stylish thing too. I mean, very objective, but her hair, uh, I understand the messiness of it, but it looks like the wind is probably blowing against her. So like the back hair is kind of like looks a little messy on the top where like it, it looks, I you do like, like it. Okay. Honestly. Like to yeah, me, I thought it, it was just like a weird poof versus a messy look. It doesn't really look messy to me versus like, Oh, the wind blew it up, you know, because I'm in the beach type thing. So, um, yeah, no, I, I actually like it. I think it's, I think it adds to the photo, you know, cause, um, yeah, I like it. So, and uh, by the way, nice humble brag on how sexy your eyes are. I, like <laughs> I wasn't trying to say that you know my eyes are sexy or or hers are sexy even. I'm just just but very similar eye color to my have. I have the that that hazel ring and the little green in the in the middle. Hers are a little more green though than mine, but um, I just thought just something I thought was interesting. So, um, Jordan, thank you so much uh for Beautiful. taking. 
for taking this photo and submitting this photo. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on. We got a few more photos left. Um, this next photo comes from Chuck. So I can never pronounce his name and I feel so bad. Uh, we're going to call him Chuck Savadelis. Savadelis. Chuck Savadelis. Savadelis. We're going with that. Okay. All right. Whoa. Okay. So for starters, I haven't seen, I haven't looked at any of these photos, guys. I, this is the first time I'm actually seeing them. Um, so, whoa, this is cool. This is really creative. Um, and I'm not really sure what I'm looking at, if we're being honest. It's very interesting lighting. Yeah. Like, uh, it, I kind of actually get the story. I like the place of shadows of everything with this. Um, the concept of it's really cool. I yeah. wish I knew what the project was, why they decided this, but the concept of this is really, really great. It looks like that's actually naturally like textured like that. So that's cool. I'd like to know if all of these lights they had con if, uh, Chuck actually had control of the lights. Like if he had control of the backlight where it's put and the front light where it's put. So let's assume that he does. And I'm going to critique it as so. So right. the first thing I would do with the lighting is on the subject, I would have maybe moved it slightly, I guess, lower and even more away from the camera to give it a full like side lighting to create like almost a Rembrandt style lighting sure. or whatever on them. Sure. Uh, that would probably kill the shadowing of the, of the lenses right there. Yeah. And then the, frame, um, the frames, you mean, I think oh, the frames. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, also with the uh, cropping of it, I'd probably crop some of the left side out and then that would create a little, I think that would create a little more uh, weight balanced photo. I do like that. I like, I love negative space and the composition of it isn't bad at all, but I think if you took away that left side, it would tell a little more story with the shadowing of the hands on the right. Uh, okay. Like, I think it would make it that uh, I think it would just make that all a little more interesting than now you have more layers to compete against of like kind of telling the story. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. So Chuck is commenting here um, and he said it's portrait of make portrait of maker of handmade papers. OK. Oh, it's a mm -hmm. oh, so no. it's a portrait. OK, gotcha. So she makes uh, or she or he uh, makes handmade paper. Mm -hmm. and, OK. OK. Um, yeah, and um, some it was shot with a Sinar F four by five. Go, I don't know what any of this is. Uh, go. <laughs> he's dagger. old school. He is definitely old school. Yes. Look at this. Th okay, this is film. This was shot on film. Mm -hmm. It seems like <laughs> uh, Dagor one hundred and fifty millimeter, uh, one hundred and fifty millimeter um, on an ectochrome. Yep, chrome. Okay, so yep, Keep film. Um, and the facility is Magnolia Productions, lit with Dynalite strobes with a soft box backlighting the paper, and a snoot lighting the subject's face. Um, so that. that beautiful. Okay, so so okay. this was shot on film. Uh, and yes. Okay. Wow. That is freaking awesome to see. I absolutely love that, Chuck. Really. Right. Really cool. And and can I take back the uh, cropping now? Because now that I know the whole story yes. of this photo i love that the left side is there because that actually completes the story like nope you know the chuck cool yeah um super dope i i abs i love this um i really do um cool well i want to move us along because we're running a little behind so i just want to keep us going um so chuck thank you so much for submitting this uh really fun image um okay this next photo comes from photographer mario jamario uh okay he used a 50 to 140 millimeter lens that's kind of an odd focal length um and post-production was done by image salon to soften the faces um okay so to me 
Hmm. So this isn't uh, this is not an image. So while there, in my opinion, there's technically really nothing wrong with the photo. I mean, there's a couple things like small things. Um, this isn't a photo that I would put in a portfolio because it's it's almost like it's too casual you know like they're like they're wearing clothes they would wear like if they were sitting in their backyard and maybe this is a casual photo i don't know um but you know when you're when you're presenting your work to potential clients you you know you want to show you want to give people the impression that you're going to make them look beautiful and you're going to make them look good whether or not you had any say in the outfits that your clients chose um i i've mentioned this before um and i'm in these videos and i'm gonna mention this again i have had photo shoots before where i've captured some of the most amazing photos in my career but i have never even put them or in, on my portfolio or posted them on social media be, simply because of the way that the, cl the couple or the clients are dressing um i i once did a, a mountaintop engagement session where the bride was wearing this like amazingly red long uh ballroom gown dress and the dude was wearing an under armor shirt just like this and and <sighs> jeans. And, I'll, and i'm thinking Been there this, yeah and you know and i try to coach my couples now especially since you know uh that situation i try to coach my couples a lot more on you know on matching and, and dressing appropriately but um because of that i i i i couldn't use the photos um so my my critique on this image is more of just of selection uh, as to what image, you know, what you're going to have your couples and your clients wear. Um, and maybe if you're going to be doing a professional shoot, if this was a paid shoot, you know, coach them a little bit on maybe some of the stuff they, sh some of the stuff they should wear. Um, so that's all I'm going to say about this, but Charles, I'm assuming you might have some stuff to, to, to add. Sure. Yeah. And uh, I, I agree with everything that you said about it. Just a couple of technical things that I normally do with these type of situations, these type of shoots. So I personally don't like using portrait style with three people. Like I only like to do it with two people or less. Yes. In a I portrait. Um, unless you're trying to show like showcased outfits. Like if now you're trying to show their pants or their dress or whatever full length and stuff like that and you're trying to keep it nice and tight then okay i get it but or like with this kind of crop too. right yes exactly exactly but with this one i think actually it would tell a better story if you turned it more on landscape so you get a little more of the lake you know yes, and you 100%. get and so you see more of the background you get a little more fills it's not a little as tight and um, just one thing that you did mention that you use the software to soften it, I can definitely tell it's softened. Um, I, I use different uh, methods of softening, but I normally try to keep it to where you where it's not noticeable. Like right. when you look at it, it looks a little rubbery, you lose pores and stuff like that. Um, yeah. It's almost like over sharpening maybe. Mm -hmm. and, um, and those things I try to like pull back the reins on. A lot of times you can, uh, push the filter or push the uh, app or whatever and then like kind of pull it back to 60 percent or something okay. like that and then that a lot of times that will help blend in uh the filter that you use to help create it so yeah definitely um i, I would agree a little over soften so mm -hmm. um well cool though uh mario i appreciate you always submitting um it's great to see your work and um, keep, you know, keep working on it, keep improving and you'll get there. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mario. We, yeah. We got four images left. Uh, this next photo comes from Corey Regovich. Um, he shot this in full sun. So he wanted to make sure that he had the couple turn towards each other to avoid squinting. Yeah. Okay. Full, full sun's hard. Um, it can be very hard. Um, oh yeah yeah so i'm gonna start i'm gonna start with the positives uh i do love the i love the tones i love the composition i love i freaking love the composition the way he framed them kind of in between those the break and the trees is just chef's kiss 
Um, mm-hmm. The negative space of the sky, perfect. Um, and I really applaud this photographer, Corey, for the post-production he did on this. I can tell he did a little bit. It's not perfect, but um, I applaud him for getting – such a well-balanced photo in such a tough lighting situation. Um, my only main critique is that I would like to see maybe a little more of her face. Um, and also clone out the people in the background, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like okay. that right there is the difference between a award-winning photo and a non-award-winning photo. Mm-hmm. It's just so yeah. Like whenever you see it, you can't stop. It. And it's uh, it's just little. Like now, it's just what press J and click and yeah, they go away. Yeah, so exactly. it, it definitely works out very easily on that. And then I would even go further as far as uh, there's that little patch open where I guess there's like picnic tables or something on the right side. You see the little hole. In yeah, the yeah, I see that too. Yep. Mm-hmm. I would just maybe clean that and just clone a bunch of trees yeah. there to kind of clean that up right there. But yeah, like I love the composition of this. If maybe this one works centered, but they're slightly off centered. So I would actually kind of do the whole chop, maybe five to ten percent off on the left side to make it okay. center weighted, perfectly center weighted. I mean, like. I'm assuming those are real clouds, but nowadays who knows? Uh, but like the cloud play is very perfect on this. Like, right? Uh, yeah, I like I love just even the angles that it, the tree line kind of works with the head, like where he put the subject head, where it doesn't look too small, like the trees are too small. But I do agree with you on turning the subjects. I think I made that comment on the other uh, couple uh, wedding photo mm-hmm. is like. Luckily, she has a good jawline, so you know they're probably fine with this. It, it accents the back of her dress, things like that. But now that you're accenting the back of her dress, you should t- probably put the train down. Like you can tell, it's still clipped oh, up. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, like you know, so you can actually show like the whole train, like kind of like flowing out. And then, uh, okay. Personally, I don't do something different with the hand with the flowers. It looks almost kind of forced there. Like it looks, his arm doesn't look comfortable, I guess. It okay. Like yeah. Maybe I, put I, it. And I do kind of like that he's holding the flowers to something a little bit different than what you typically mm-hmm. see. Um, but I, yeah, I kind of, I kind of like that he's holding them. I, I agree. Maybe okay. it does look a little stiff right there, but I like, I do like the fact that he's holding them. So it looks like me holding my wife's purse. <laughs> there you go there you go <laughs> a beautiful right. image i love this Ooh. definitely definitely yeah thank you so much for for submitting this uh cory i haven't seen you submit before so very excited to see you on here so thank you um all right we're moving on we got a couple more this next one comes from naomi o'hara and she captured this with natural light blasphemy no i'm just kidding <laughs> uh no nope, as long is, as it works yeah exactly and this is a perfect example of how you know, where there's a situation where, oh, there's, it goes my camera again, um, where natural light can be, um, beautiful, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, I love the lens flare, you know, it, it just, that's super dope. I do too. I like the lens flare, but I kind of don't like where it's placed. Sure. I know it's, it's so hard to control lens flare. It's like, you know, because you're more worried about the angles that you're taking the photo of the subject. And then the angle of the lens flare definitely plays a second part in it. But I don't like that it kind of goes into her chin. And then now that it goes into her chin, like, I'm going to just speak on like a lot of my clients. Like, that's one of the girls, one of the ladies always complain while well, is kind of their chin line, the whole whatever. And it kind of makes you focus on that because of this. And so if she has any kind of self-consciousness in her chin, in her, in that line right there, she's going to see it. You okay. know, it's like to this bride, she's fine. Like you, there's no real bad double chin line going on, but you do see a subtle line of shadowing right there. And so if this girl has any kind of like 
it, like uh, issue with her chin, then you know that leads right to it. Um, another thing is maybe the color tones. Like she, I don't, uh, it looks a little uh, magenta, I guess to me. Like I don't know if it's my screen. Hold on, let me move it to my I'm, other. I'm not. Yeah, I think maybe very slightly. Okay, never mind. Yeah, very slightly. That's just my bad screen that I'm yeah. viewing the big photos on. Sorry, sorry about that. Oh, you're good. You're good. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I really like everything. I like that, like, yeah, her face is more prominent. Kind of going back to, I'd say, like, the bride is the star of the show normally. So I like that, you know, that her nose is showing, that her face is more predominant in the photo. She's brushing through his nice, luscious hair. And, uh, yeah, like, cool image. I, I feel it. I feel their love. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I don't think the Naomi, I don't, I don't know if the, the lens flare necessarily, uh, you know, breaks the image, uh, if in a perfect world, it, it might be best not to have it on the chin, but, um, I, I certainly don't think it, it ruins it by any means. Uh, right. Oh no, not at all. Yeah. And if I were to do, if I were to change something and again, I'm just, this is just something so small, but if I were to change something, I probably would actually crop it a little bit tighter. Um, you know, since you're not seeing the groom's full face and it's focused mainly on the bride, um, you don't need to have all of his, the top of his head in the photo. You don't need to have it all in there. So I would, this is actually an example of an image where I probably would crop it a little bit tighter. Yeah. Maybe put like her eye into the thirds. Like, oh, so you're just kind of cutting it very slightly, yeah. uh, probably to his ear line, like very slightly above his ear line. So you're not cropping his ear, but yeah, something right. like that would probably work. Cool. All oh, right. Beautiful. Well, yeah, Naomi, thank you so much for submitting. Really, yeah, really great image. I, I love I love when natural light images are done right and are done well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a big fan of light and airy, but this is <laughs> this is one that I can definitely get on board with. So, right, um, it's crisp where it needs to be crisp, and light and airy where it needs to be light yeah. and airy. So, okay. yeah, well done. Yeah. So this next photo it comes from an anonymous photographer, uh, and this was. Captured with one light, shot through an umbrella as the main light uh, camera left. Um, oh, hmm. well, Anonymous, as his name, I just noticed, is on the bottom right of the photo. Um, so, <laughs> can't be that. I guess, sorry, all an anonymity. Anonym That's a hard word to say. Anonymity? Anonymity? Anonymity. There we go. All anonymity is gone. Damn, English is hard sometimes. Okay. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so anonymous photographer. What I would probably recommend here is just to um, dehaze the image a little bit. Clean up. It's a little hazy, especially by his head. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, so, you know, you can use that, you know, do that either using the dehaze tool or adding some contrast. Um, it just seems a little fuzzy. And I think it's just because the – I'm not really sure why, actually – uh, cause the, it could be cause the light's a little flat maybe, but, or you have this, the soft box turned slightly towards, you're having it feathered towards the camera and that could be causing a little bit of haze. Um, mm -hmm. so like, so basically the light from the soft box is actually kind of hitting the lens a little bit and it's causing that, that fuzziness. Um, so that would be something, you know, in the moment you could try to fix, but in post-production you can certainly dehaze it. Um, but I, but some of the positives though, I, I really like how he's framed in between the two pillars. I think that that works very well. I do like the pose. It seems it's very like, you know, uh, kind of it fits the vibe of of the skater, you know, the skater boy kind of thing. Um, I think just overall the image is a little bit flat, and I'd like to see a little bit more pop and in, in color um, and contrast. But what would you think? Yeah. There. Um, yep. I love the image. I like the story that it is telling. A uh, couple of just quick cleanups is on the left side, you get a piece of a ledge kind of thing, kind of just hanging there that doesn't really need to be there. I'd probably would just clean that up really fast. Okay. Um, I like that he has a cast or has his arm wrapped, but I wish it was yeah. like showed a little more because that's the whole like, you know, this is it's a dangerous part of the story. Sport. Yeah right exactly and um 
So when I first looked at this image, and that's where I kind of noticed his name, I like, I don't know if I like the bottom, the, the foreground. Like, I don't know if it needs to be there or if it's more of a distraction to the rest of the story. Um, but I mean, like, I'm always good for a good foreground. And it is a good foreground, but I don't know if it's almost kind of distracting from the rest of the story with it. Um, and I, if I'm I was keeping... Like you kind of like it? Yeah, like yeah, it's, it is like cool it. because it's even like a nice little line, a kind of a leading line yeah. into things, you know? So yeah. it's cool. Um, I do love that he's framed with those pillars and everything back there. But at this angle, I might have kind of went a little higher to where his head's not connected to the middle of the third, like the, those three little things are coming out of the oh, yellow yeah. thing. You see how that's kind of in his head? I think if you could <laughs> even angle that to where it's kind of pointing at him, more okay. than it's in, into his head that so that'll add an extra like leading into him but uh and one other little tiny thing that i might have tried that he probably even has is uh turning the camera rotating it maybe like 30 degrees uh counterclockwise to where those rails behind him is more of a leading line towards him instead of kind of leading into his backside right there gotcha you know gotcha. so like it would be a cool like left to uh or a right to left leading into him you know right right mm -hmm. okay well cool but cool image uh, mm -hmm. yeah definitely um thank you anonymous photographer for submitting <laughs> I appreciate it all right we got two more this last or the second to last photo comes from photographer austin alvarez this was shot with a 5d mark three and a 24 to 70 with natural light if I remember correctly, Austin um, submitted another photo very similar to this. Different content. I think it was a bride, but similar style of facing okay. the light uh, during the last image critique. And so he's definitely got, you know, a niche <laughs> uh, or mm -hmm. at least a, a style of photo that he really likes to gravitate towards. Um, so normally, okay. you know, you, I would say, yeah, get, get her out of the center of the frame you know, mm -hmm. move, move, you know, maybe move, pan the camera a little bit to the left. Um, but the reason why I do think it kind of works in this image is because you have the lamp tying the photo in together. Um, right. Without that there, it wouldn't be a successful image, but because it's there, I think it adds to the story a little bit. Um, so in this situation, I, I do think, you know, kind of breaking the, the rule of thirds law, it, you know, works especially since her her head is in the center of the frame mm -hmm. um this... is he a does he shoot wide angle a lot like i'm not very familiar with him I'm so not, i mean i'm not super image. familiar with all mm -hmm. like his work i mean i i've seen it and it's beautiful but um mm -hmm. so I, I can't say for certain um but the only yeah. thing i would say is just watch the highlights especially on her chest mm -hmm. a little bit blown out um remember what i told you guys told you guys earlier in the or a little bit a few photos ago your your face or your eyes will generally go towards the brightest part of the scene so you want to make sure you watch that but uh what do you have to add here charles yeah uh, well good well done on the balance of the lighting because natural light and tungsten light hate each other and i hate them together uh but you know you they, he kept the tones very well done in that aspect and i really appreciate that um i'm not a fan of wide angle lenses like used in a portraiture stance i mean and that's the whole your own style i know a lot of people who love it a lot of people who swear by it and they make a lot of happy or clients happy with it um but to me like it exaggerates things too much like i normally when i do it you're trying to exaggerate something right uh, and then so now that i like i this feels very wide angle lindsay and so i'm like why is it trying to exaggerate and it's kind of like is it exaggerating her shoes you know because that's kind of what's like closest to the camera so it's definitely like enlarged um with this camera angle I'm, this almost looks like it's a 16 like something like that that he's using um, yeah, probably is honestly. Mm -hmm. And then it just feels slightly tilted, like, and that's the whole wide angle thing. When you're you, yeah. you're when you're shooting in corners with wide angle, like it can make you feel really uncomfortable when you're looking at all the lines. Like, there's so many lines on the wall that you're looking for, like the horizon straightness. 
you know sure and then right. so you're just kind of like oh now i feel wonky i kind of feel unbalanced and then so like that kind of that's a thing that i that kind of watch out for um watching the planes and then also just the whole lines through your head which is hard to avoid in this room really but like yeah. how she's in a the corner there so she's got like three different tridents going through her head right there and it just kind of doesn't feel comfortable so um, i would maybe moved her like slightly closer to the window i guess to get that out of the way maybe i mean in his defense i i think i kind of understand the why he did it that way because i think i would rather see her head placed in between those two you know that rectangle oh, that right. square as opposed to like <clears throat> the the bottom of the frame like running through her head so right like, how do you do you think it would be hard to photoshop those three lines out or the, that corner line out like that um or would it make it feel weird just because it's not there and not creating the 3d you know it, it doesn't bother me enough to where i would want to do that but i don't think it, i think if you did remove it in post-production it, it wouldn't necessarily take away from the image or would be that challenging so um that kind of just comes to you know stylistic choice uh to the photographer but but no, I don't think I don't think it makes or breaks the um, the image. And you know, Chuck brought up a good point. He says that you know the lines on the wall guide the eye towards the subject. Lighting and composition is somewhat in the style of Vermeer. So um, mm -hmm. I I would agree with that actually. I would agree mm -hmm. with, with Chuck on this. So um, well, cool, Austin. Thank you so much for submitting. Really appreciate you. We're gonna go ahead and oh, go to nice our awesome. yeah. We're gonna go ahead and go to our last image of the critique, and this is from photographer. Kurt Walton. Okay. I'm just taking a look at this here. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at her, uh, I'm looking at her face and I can see some catch lights. And what I'm thinking happened here is he shot this, yeah, I, I, okay, I, I see, I'm look, I can see what happened. So he shot this in direct sunlight, and he's using flash to help fill in the shadows on the right side of her face. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it, it's a little, the light, even though he's doing that, the light's still pretty harsh. You know, it, it's, it's not soft light by any means. I can tell that he tried to soften her skin a little bit. Um, you know, in post production, and I could see some specularity on the on where her hair meets her forehead. Um, yeah, but you, yeah, you can just tell, especially looking at her, yeah, like that spec, that's that hot spot, and then her hair. It is very harsh. I probably would have turned her so her her back is at the sun, so the mm. so her face is in shadow, and then you can light with flash if you wanted to. Um, what are you thinking? Yeah. So I would also maybe like have her not tilt her head so much because you see that really light, weird shadowing on her right eye. Like you see that it's just barely lit like right under her eye right there. Yeah. Like I would try to kind of like kill that or enhance that to where it's not. I think that's actually be created by a shadow of part of the flower. That's oh, okay. creating that little weird little strip right there. I would probably clean that up. And then it also looks like her eyes are a little red, like the uh, the whites of her eyes, especially on the left side. I would probably just clean that up for her. Like uh, it's probably allergies or something going on with her. But also it doesn't help that like she has naturally red hair and tones and stuff like that. So it just kind of sure helps, uh, just slightly. Um, but it looks like she's he's maybe burned her eyes just slightly too much too. Like, does that look like Photoshop to you? A like, little bit, yeah. It does mm -hmm. look like he maybe he uh he or dodged it. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. he brought. Yeah, that's I know what you meant. He he brought the the exposure up in the eyes. It does look a little bit like that. I think. And someone commented, you know, the eyes are a little intense, and I, I think that's exactly why. Is he just brought it up a little bit mm -hmm. too much? Um, I I think the hard part is we're we're just com there's too much things competing with each other. You know, um, there's two, they're like, you know, the, the light from his flash and then the light from the sun, I think they're just competing with each other too much. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the angle is a little off too. Like, I almost feel like he should have for this type of photo, almost like shot her straight on as opposed to like, right. kind of weird, this weird angle. Um, mm -hmm. 
I, de I definitely agree. Like these type of photos, yeah, you want this whole symmetry thing going on, or uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing that's kind of uh something I maybe this is a personal opinion, but uh, I'll let you weigh in. When you're shooting uh, images up this close, you know it'll obviously pick up a lot of detail and, and a lot of flaws, if any. Um, and in this case, one thing that's kind of distracting for me is, you know, her hair. You can definitely see a lot of like the flyaways, especially mm -hmm. towards her right side. So when you're shooting, when you're composing an image this close, you're bringing a lot of attention to some of those those details. Um, so if you are going to take photos this close, you really need to make an effort to keep an eye on eye out for stuff like that and you know adjust and fix if necessary what actually might have been interesting to do to help fix that because that's another thing i noticed well, i was trying to think of how to work on that because more than likely you know this is shot on like during the wedding day her hair is at what it is and then you're you're trying to create these things but maybe you surveil you know, like kind of create a nice oh, little yeah. mm -hmm. uh, veil shot with that and create a little frame with that. Even move the veil on the sun side and create a cool little pattern on her and, uh, you know, something like that. But I actually kind of like the incorporation, like with this angle, the cool thing that, that helps is incorporates the necklace. I love this the emerald necklace that she's got going on because it yeah. complements her look and everything like that. And you know that that's really cool touch right there. That was uh that was done intentionally. Totally. And totally. Uh, you know so yeah cool cool, cool. photo. Yeah, Kurt, thank you so much for submitting. I really appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that brings us officially to the end of our June image critiques. Mm -hmm. um, we actually are doing our July image critiques next week, one week from today. So we are halfway full. Um, so we ha we still have space for submissions. I did post the link. It's pinned in the group. So make sure you guys um, submit. I am going to be closing those as soon as it hits 20. And again, um, we're go we're our guest critiquer is Sandra Miltenberger. So I can't wait to see you guys same place, same time next week. But before we sign off, we have – two announcements we have a giveaway of our cheetah stand c10 light stand and then we also have another big announcement but before we uh announce those or that winner charles is there anything that you would like to share with uh, with our viewers it, you know any um any exciting things that cheetah stand has coming up or anything to that extent uh yeah so uh you do know that we're going to uh click on in a couple of weeks so we'll be seeing you and a few other people out there we're really looking forward to that uh, we have a couple of really exciting outdoors uh things in the pipes that we're definitely working on hopefully we'll have that out for you guys soon but one thing that i definitely want to mention is looking at these images it, uh, I really love that everyone's was striving to do their best for the client or the sub like the subject and uh, creating really cool content. And one thing that we try to do at Cheetah Stand is make sure that setting up isn't a part of your workflow. It shouldn't have to sit there and take up your time. It shouldn't have to take up your stress level. You have plenty of other things to worry about. And so what we strive is to get you set up and under a minute, two minutes tops and have you creating. And whenever you do need to uh, change things on the fly, like if you need to fix your lighting, that you can do that really fast, really quick, efficiently to where you don't break your train of thought. So those are just big things that we really strive on as creators ourselves that, you know, really helps us with these type of things. And look at most of the images that we that we went through today. A lot of them are on location or at rented areas and things like that. So time is money. And, uh, you know, a lot of times with the clients too. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, thank you for that. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing you at ClickCon and, um, hopefully if you guys are going to click on, make sure you say hi to Charles, make sure, make sure you say hi to me. Um, let's go ahead and announce the winner, um, mm -hmm. for our, our C10 light stand. And this is someone that uh, we randomly selected. We, we put all the names in a random name or number picker. Um, so it, there's no biasness here, but the winner of the C10 light stand is Steve Eaton. So congratulations. Um, we'll go ahead and reach out to me or to Charles and we'll get you that light stand. Um, and then we have one more big announcement. Uh, Charles, why don't you tell everyone um, what it is? 
Okay, great. Thanks, John. Uh, so we really appreciate everyone participating in this. It takes a lot of courage to really put your images out there for two people to sit there and tear apart. You know, um, I, I personally get really jittery whenever I present my stuff that aren't for my clients, but for other professionals and people and stuff like that. So we really appreciate you guys putting yourselves out there. So as a gift from me, and uh, David from Cheetah Stand and Sean is that we'd love to give everyone who participated in this a $50 gift card uh, to be spent on Cheetah Stand. And you can combine that with the code with Sean. So, you know, show them a little support with everything. And just a top note that everything is free shipping over $100. And if you live outside of the great state of Texas, then you are not going to get taxed. So, you know, uh, nice. definitely it should help everyone get some extra gear in with them. And if you guys have any questions, always just feel free to give us a call or email either me or David, uh, my partner will be the ones answering all of these uh, questions that you guys have. And we really appreciate you having us on here today, Sean. Yeah. Thank you so much, Charles. Um, if you're one of the ones that submitted, uh, we'll figure out a way to get that, uh, $50 gift card to you. We'll probably email it since I have all of your email addresses. Uh, so keep an eye out for that, but really, uh, that was awesome of you and David Charles to, to do that. Um, I, we, you know, being able to give everyone the opportunity to try one of your light stands is, is amazing. So, um, Thank you so much again to everyone that submitted. Make sure you guys submit an image for our image critique next Wednesday. Uh, again, once I hit that 20 number, we are closing it and we're already halfway through. So um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Stay safe. Don't do drugs. Cheers, okay? <laughs> Cheers to that. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Bye, guys.